The Museum of Discovery and Science is proud to bring you Wise Bodies, presented by AIDS Healthcare Foundation. I know that AIDS is like the worst one you can get. HIV can like proceed to become AIDS. AIDS is when HIV is not treated properly or quick enough, it develops into AIDS. There is a big distinction between HIV and AIDS, and it's a distinction that not a lot of people are aware of. HIV is a virus, the human immunodeficiency virus, that when it infects someone, if that person goes without any treatment or without recognition of their disease, as a result of having HIV in their body, they will develop usually within seven to ten years, sometimes sooner, sometimes later, depending on their immune system, they will develop AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. People who have AIDS have an immune system that is poorly lacking in its ability to remove pathogens from the body. People always ask, where did HIV come from? How come we just heard about it, you know, in the 1980s? In 1981 is when we first had the uh, awareness, the emergence of this disease. It was a published article in the New York Times in July of 1981 saying that there was a rare cancer that was affecting 41 homosexuals, uh, is the way that the article was worded. And what was happening to these individuals, that otherwise healthy individuals we're actually coming down with opportunistic infections, diseases, KS, Carposi sarcoma, something that you would never see in these individuals. And they didn't understand what was causing it. But the only thing that they knew in common was they knew that they were all sexually active gay men. HIV's been around for a long time. We just found out about it in the 1980s because there was a group of people that became infected with something that didn't make sense. A, a disease that usually happened in really old people, and these were young men. And so that's how HIV was first like identified in the United States. But HIV didn't start in the United States, it didn't start by a specific person. HIV came through a period of evolution from the simian immunodeficiency virus, SIV, um, which is a virus that affects a certain type of monkey. And then there's certain cultures where they butcher monkeys for their brain meat. And that process can be pretty bloody. And so it's believed that maybe over a period of centuries, the blood from the simian virus got into some human and it started to convert into a human virus. And it took it a while before it became a pathogenic human virus, right? A virus that created disease that, that killed us. Um, and that's how we then discovered it, because people were dying and we were trying to figure out what they were dying from. So uh, this is a model of a CD4 cell, which is a cell that's in uh, everyone's immune system. And this CD4 cell is being attacked by HIV viruses. And these are the pieces that you see here that are in blue with the red dots on them. And they attach into the cell and they get absorbed. So what happens in an HIV infection is that HIV gets inside of the cell and it takes over the cell's functions using the cell to make more HIV in the system. So when you get infected, the amount of virus that's in your body shoots way up. We call that the viral load. The person's own CD4 T cells, cellular machinery is being overtaken to produce HIV proteins not its own protein. If this goes unchecked with no medication to stop the HIV from replicating, the CD4 cells die off. Let's take a minute to visualize. These packing peanuts represent those CD4 white blood cells that typically protect your body's immune system from opportunistic infections. This acetone represents the spread of HIV in the body. As you can see, it easily breaks down those cells. As HIV continues to spread through the body, if left untreated, it will continue to break down those white blood cells until the immune system is left defenseless against those opportunistic infections. This is why continuing your treatment and taking medications is crucial for stopping the spread of HIV and preventing the development of AIDS. 
If they get on appropriate antiretroviral therapy and they're compliant with their medication and their viral load drops and their HIV becomes adequately suppressed, their CD4 count can regenerate because the HIV isn't there anymore in enough quantities to keep stifling their growth and replication. Living a long, healthy life with HIV, in a sense, can be simple. One, two pills a day is all it takes to stay alive. It is still a big issue. A lot of that, I wholeheartedly believe, still stems from the concept of stigma. You can't just look at a person and just say, oh, they have AIDS. Like, or look at a gay person and be like, oh, they have AIDS. You can't just assume that immediately from what you look at. You can't know, because anyone can contract AIDS or HIV. I think what's most important um, is that we help people get rid of the stigma of knowing their HIV status. It's actually simpler to treat than diabetes. And if people get tested and get treated, we wouldn't have new people getting infected. Um, we know that if a person is on their medicine and their virus is controlled to that undetectable level, which is the, the goal of medicine, they cannot pass it on. But they have to be undetectable, so they need to know their status to be on medication for that to happen. What teenagers can do to really help themselves and be protected is empower themselves, to know the information, to be able to be the source of information for not only themselves, but their communities and friends around them. So the more you know, the more you're going to be able to protect yourselves. Wise Bodies is an innovative HIV AIDS awareness and prevention program. And we truly encourage you to know your body know your status and help us make a difference.